I am tempted to quote the great Leonard Cohen. I'm guided by the beauty of our weapons. Um, and they are beautiful pictures of, uh, of fearsome armaments. This is a memo that describes how we're going to take out seven countries in five years, starting with Iraq and then Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and finishing off Iran. On April 6, 2017, on the 100-year anniversary of America's entry into World War I, Donald Trump launched airstrikes against the Syrian government in retaliation for a gas attack supposedly perpetrated by Assad. There was no investigation, not even a hack job of a frame-up like we had in 2003. The evidence we do have contradicts the official story, and the stakes are much, much higher this time around. Then, before the dust had even settled, Trump pivoted to Asia, ratcheting up intimidation tactics towards North Korea, threatening regime change, practically begging an already insecure Kim Jong-un to do something stupid. And that's the point. Provoke a response, and then play the victim. If he can't get it the old-fashioned way, he might just make one up. Trump cut a deal with the deep state. He signed on with the neoliberal neocon corporate alliance. They got his back now. As long as they get their war, everybody's happy. Make no mistake, this is just the beginning. Expect the unexpected in the South China Sea, Iran, Eastern Europe, and on the home front. The circus tent is coming down. But boy, oh boy, is he going to give us a show in the meantime. I think this is the most dangerous moment in American-Russian relations since the Cuban Missile Crisis in 1962. We're in a new and worse Cold War with Russia. There are three Cold War fronts fraught with hot war. The Baltics, where NATO is building up, Ukraine, you all know that story, and Syria. The additional kind of stories coming out of Washington this past week that the United States is actually developing some plans uh, for the killing of Kim uh, off of deploying nuclear weapons inside of South Korea, that would lead to an escalation of tension that could lead to accidental nuclear war on the Korean Peninsula. Trump isn't just flirting with World War III, he's inviting it, and he wants everyone to know that he's crazy enough to pull the trigger. Thinks it'll help him twist some arms, thinks he can force the big boys to negotiate. This isn't a real estate deal. And that's not an ace he's got up his sleeve. Nobody wins a nuclear war. If just 300 of Russia's nuclear bombs were set off in the United States, somewhere between 75 and 100 million people would die in the first half hour. Most of the infrastructure needed to support the population would be instantly destroyed. Communication systems, hospitals, transport, power plants, etc. Those not killed in the initial blast would die slowly in the coming months from radiation poisoning, starvation, exposure, and disease. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. Even a smaller nuclear conflict involving only 50 to 100 Hiroshima-sized bombs would send 5 million tons of debris into the upper atmosphere, causing global temperatures to plummet catastrophically, reducing rainfall worldwide for up to a decade, devastating agriculture, and triggering mass starvation on a global scale. That is not a world you would want to raise children in. The powers that be want to tip the game board, rewrite history, start again. They think you're too dumbed down, too distracted to see past their pseudo-emotional platitudes and actually look at the evidence. It would be completely illogical for Assad to use chemical weapons at this stage of the conflict. The Syrian army was winning with conventional means, and Russia had their back. That gave them an extremely strong position going into negotiations. Assad would have to be a total moron to pull a stunt like this, and he's not. Then there's the fact that Assad doesn't actually have such weapons. According to the OPCW, the last of Syria's chemical weapons were handed over for destruction in 2014. John Kerry himself confirmed this. But Assad used chemical weapons before. Really? When? According to the UN investigation conducted on the gas attacks of 2013, as reported by the BBC, it was the rebels that used sarin, not Assad. Obama didn't back down in 2013 because he was too weak. He backed down because US-backed rebels got caught red-handed, and we the people refused to let them get away with it. 
You activated in 2013 against these airstrikes. You flooded the phone lines as Congress approached the vote. You didn't ask nicely. You made it clear that we knew their names and addresses and that we would hold them personally accountable for the consequences. Funny thing, they canceled the vote and humanity temporarily stepped away from the abyss. Trump himself spoke out against the airstrikes at that time. He demanded a formal declaration of war by Congress. Otherwise, it would be unconstitutional. He pointed out just how stupid and destructive such a decision would be. He pointed out how this would just strengthen the jihadists, create more refugees, he stabilized the region. But now he's in power, and he's decided he's not going to cancel World War III, after all. Mr. Trump is a liar, a hypocrite, and a fool. He is turning the US military into Al-Qaeda's air force. He's playing chicken with humanity's future. He's rolling dice for the inhabitability of the planet. And this insanity is bipartisan. The neoliberal neocon corporate alliance has come out of the closet in a disgusting show of warmongering solidarity. They think you're too stupid, too distracted, too weak to do anything about it. These haircuts and suits don't deserve your obedience. They don't deserve your respect. It's not their power, it's yours. If enough of you figure that out, it's game over. That's why they pit you against each other, provoking artificial group identities. Divide and conquer makes you easy to control. The choices we make in the next few milliseconds of human history count a lot. When the odds are stacked against us and failure is not an option, we must formulate an asymmetrical response. We have to think outside the box, find creative ways to break the chain of obedience, and send a message in uncompromising terms. Stand down, Mr. Trump. Stand down. This video is Creative Commons. You have permission to download, copy, and distribute it by any means. If you'd like to support our work, you can donate at stormcloudsgathering.com forward slash donate. You can find the transcript, sources, and original video at stormcloudsgathering.com at the link below. For more, subscribe to Stormclouds Gathering on YouTube and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+.